All right, buddy. This is John, the creature teacher, and here we have Tank. Let the camera focus in on him. Is it gonna focus? There we go. This here is Tank, and Tank is a Sudan plated lizard, also known as a giant plated lizard. Now he bears a passing resemblance to a skink. He has short legs and a rather large, thick body, real wide midsection, and almost no neck. Kind of can barely tell that he has a neck. It just looks like his head connects directly to the rest of his body. And they have a large, thick tail. So they do resemble a skink in some ways. Is it going to focus on his head? There we go. But these are a type of lizard. Now, these are found in Africa. They are found in southern Sudan, but they're also found in a variety of other countries. In uh, eastern, eastern Africa, kind of, kind of extends to uh, eastern central Africa, down south a little bit. I believe they're the... Some reports have them all the way down into Kruger National Park. Now, uh, unlike unlike Godzilla over there, when uh, I pull Tank out, I do have to hold him. I can't uh, let him sit on top of someone else's house or enclosure or anything like that. That's just because uh, plated lizards tend to be a little bit more jumpy animals, especially since because this guy is a wild-caught animal. He was he was uh, caught in, in Africa for the pet trade. They are popular as pets. Um... Now there there are dis some severe disadvantages to purchasing a uh, wild caught reptiles. Uh, one can be that they, you know, they might have uh, parasites from the wild that they bring with with them. So it's always important to monitor that. Another thing is that it can affect uh, wild populations pretty severely. Uh, for certain animals, for this particular species, it is apparently very locally locally common and throughout its entire range. So at the moment, it's uh, doesn't seem to be a problem. Uh, one way, if you are wanting to purchase reptiles that are uh, captive bred only, uh, it's always important to uh, ask questions about that. Is it wild caught? Is it captive bred? Talk to the pet store or dealer that you're that you're dealing with. Um, one way you can tell is usually captive bred animals are going to command a much higher price. They're going to be a lot more expensive than wild caught animals. Generally, because they're going to be bred here in the United States, they're going to command a higher price. Uh, and also, if there's a lot of color morphs, if you're buying some kind of weird color morph, especially with ball pythons and bearded dragons or leopard geckos, those uh, those wild color morphs or uh, color morphs are not going to be found out in the wild. This is pretty much the wild coloration. There's two subspecies of this reptile. Uh, I do not know which one this is as of yet. He's got the yellowish lines on him. That kind of gives it away as to what particular subspecies he might be. But the most accurate way is uh, the scales on the underside. You count them. Uh, the ventral scales. I have just have not done that yet. Now, these guys are called plated lizards because of these large scales that they have. Now, they're not just scales. Underneath each one of those scales is what's called an osteodermal plate. So it's kind of like bony plates under there, and it makes for a very rigid, thick, armor-like plate that uh, gives them a pretty good defense against predators. They're also, they have sharp edges, so with this long tail that they have, the camera will focus on it. Come on, camera. Come on, any day now. Any, well, eventually the camera will. Uh, but that tail there, come on, camera. This camera is wanting to focus on all the wrong stuff right now. There we go. You can see how each one of those scales kind of has like a little sharp ridge on it. And so when they, they'll flick that tail at a predator or something that's bothering them. And when those scales hit you, they can actually cut you pretty bad. Uh, that has not happened to me. Even though he is a little skittish, he has not been that bad. He's pretty, he's fairly friendly. But these scales give them an excellent defense against predators. Now, for his enclosure, uh, uh, unlike the other ones, I do have uh, soil in here. Now, it's not because this is necessarily an animal that is from a tropical climate. They do come from drier, dry regions. Not quite as dry as, say, a bearded dragon, which is pretty, from pretty uh, dry, arid parts of Australia. But it is still fairly dry. Uh, but these reptiles love to dig. They like to dig into the dirt in the soil and uh, kind of bury themselves. I actually had to brush a whole bunch of dirt off of him when I pulled him out. He had dirt all over his body because he was kind of buried in his little house there. So it's important to give him something that they can dig around into. Now, I do give this a light misting every day. He does have a water dish he can soak in. And being an insectivore, he loves to eat bugs. Now, these will also eat uh, plant matter as well, so I do give him collard greens, turnip greens, stuff like that. He does not like it that much, uh, so I don't give him a whole lot, just a little bit. 
You want to go in there, buddy? He, ooh, are you gonna, you gonna show us eating? He normally will not eat when I'm around. Sometimes I get to see him do it. He might just go right into his house, which is usually what he does when I put him back in there. Kind of likes to have some privacy when he eats. This enclosure here is just kind of completely closed off. It's got these uh, glass panes that go on the front like this. Kind of slide in, and there's kind of like a sliding door. He likes to get dirt into these tracks, so I do have to clean it out. That's one issue of having him in here, but it's not that big of a deal. He's going to... There you go. See, he just flicked his tail right there. So even though he is used to me holding him, they're still always a little bit jumpy. He's not mean. He's not aggressive. It's just he is a wild-caught animal. He's not used to people a whole lot, and so I'm a large giant thing. And it's a little bit freaky when something when you're a foot when you're a foot and a half long and something that's you know almost six feet tall is trying to pick you up and touch you. You don't know what it is. So, also it is a good response if you're buying a wild caught animal. Um, if you can't avoid it, if you're buying a particular reptile or something that is only wild caught, that is the case sometimes. Uh, don't try, if possible, not to get something that just sits there and moves it's lethar or doesn't move it's lethargic it doesn't want to run around that's usually a sign that there's something severely wrong with the animal uh i wanted to pick one of these guys up because they are really cool and uh when i chose mine i picked the one who was the most lively he was the one who was willing to who wanted to smack me with his tail and he was he was he was wanting to run around a bit more away from people trying to handle him and that's usually a sign that you know he is reacting the way he normally would. Reptiles in general, you know, they're not used to people. They will try to try to run away or defend themselves. Like, I mean, these normally don't bite. I've never never heard of an instance of one of them biting people. They do have a mouth. It, has, it does have teeth in it, so there's always that chance. But again, never heard of an instance where they would. But uh, he, even though he is handled handled quite often, he still sometimes is a little jumpy. There you go. He just moved a little bit. And that's a natural response. That's not a bad thing uh, if they're like that. Now, if th if this is, I would not get this as a pet for, you know, a little kid. Uh, you don't want them getting smacked. You don't want this thing hitting them in the face with their tail. Uh, in general, little children should not have reptiles as pets because they're probably not going to be able to care for them that well. But if you, uh, again, if you, you are getting a reptile as an adult, even if it's captive bred, um, you'll want to pick one if you're getting it at a young age. If it's a little jumpy, and it wants to keep its distance from you. That's kind of a normal response. That's don't be don't be worried or concerned or you know wishing you could hold it. Some reptiles are just never really gonna be something that you can handle a lot. These are kind of like that. You know he's okay with being handled, but when I put him back in his house, he wants his space. He wants his personal space, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know bearded dragons are the opposite. You can you can hold those guys. You can put them on your shirt and walk around. Uh, these guys, you know, sometimes he'll hang it on my shirt. Sometimes he doesn't want to do it. Sometimes he's like, nope, I want to go back in my house. He's he's a little more introverted. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just how they are. But anyways, we're going to we're going to say bye to Tank. I'm going to give him his space. If he, if he starts eating again, I'll I'll uh, try to take a video of it. Again, he likes to have a little bit of privacy before he starts eating. But anyways, this has been John with the Creature Teacher. Uh, feel free to subscribe, like the video, share them. And of course, as always, you can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, Twitter as well. Anyways, you guys have a great day. See you later.